Hey there, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ajay. I'm a doctor from Bangalore, India. There are two things that I think everyone will agree on. First is that 2020 sucked, not just for travel, but in general. The second thing is that we are all itching to go out and travel again. If you're not excited by the possibility of going out and traveling again, this video is not going to add any value to your life. So you can just skip this video. But if you're excited about traveling, hop on, let's go. Not on a trip, but to the video. So right after the lockdown was lifted and airline companies started you know, flying again, I was asked by Travel and Leisure magazine to tell people about how they can keep themselves safe while traveling. I'm not an expert in public health, but I'm interested in public health and one of the journalists who had watched one of my YouTube videos felt that the info I was giving was authentic. So right around that point, I thought of making a video on this, but really not many people were traveling and it wouldn't serve any real good purpose. But now that traveling is gaining more steam and more people are traveling for leisure and work, etc. I thought this would be a good time to make this video and also because one of the viewers emailed me asking for this video so this is for you. At this point I have to mention that experts like Dr. Anthony Fauci still believe that we may have to continue social distancing, wearing masks etc till the end of 2021 because vaccine distribution and vaccine to act it is going to take some time. Now if you're curious as to which is the more safer mode of transport if it's taking a flight, if it's taking a bus or if it's taking a train. Taking the flight is the safest in this scenario. I'll explain why in the video. So all the ideas, tips and principles that I'm going to explain in this video, I'm going to use uh, taking a flight as the example, but you can extrapolate this to, you know, taking a bus or taking the train as well. And I want to mention that this video is not sponsored by any airline companies. I'm not trying to promote air travel. I just want you to know how to keep yourself safe if and when you decide to travel. This seems counterintuitive. I mean, the airplane cabin is a closed space, so it should be pretty more dangerous, right? Well, I disagree. You see, the air inside the cabin is 50% fresh air and 50% recirculated air. How do airplanes get fresh air, you ask? Well, you've seen one of those gigantic engines on the wings of a plane, right? What these do is they suck air in from the atmosphere and this sucking in of air and letting it out is kind of what propels the plane forward and keeps it flying. A portion of this air is used to air condition the cabin. But the sucked in air cannot be directly used to cool the cabin because it will be superheated around 250 degrees. It not only kills the bacteria and viruses, it will also kill the passengers inside the cabin. So this air is cooled. It is put under pressure of around 450 pounds per square inch and then it is pushed into the cabin. So this 50% of the air in the cabin is sterile. So the other 50% of the air that is recirculated would have been filtered through a HEPA filter or a high efficiency particulate air filter, which filters more than 95% of everything that passes through it. So that 50% is also clean and safe. Almost. All the air in the cabin is replaced every three to four minutes, which is much better than air conditioned homes, offices, malls, and airports, which, you know, replace this air just once in eight to 12 minutes. So now that we have established that the air inside the cabin is kind of okay, it is still not 100% safe. And that's because of the person sitting next to you. So if your next seat neighbor has the virus and they're not wearing a mask properly, they can potentially spread the virus to you. So how do we deal with this? That's points two, three, and four. Surgical masks and cloth masks are good at preventing spread from you to others, but they're not good at protecting you from others. To protect yourself, you have to wear a N95 mask and not just any N95 mask. You have to wear a N95 mask that is NIOSH graded. Don't buy those KN95 masks. They are not good enough. Now these N95 masks filter out 95% of the air that you're breathing in. The other 5% may not have a viral load enough to cause infection. So that is not to be worried about. This is just in the worst case scenario, considering if a person next to you has the virus, which usually is not the case. And men, um, sorry to be the bringer of bad news, but you'll have to shave off your beard. Facial hair won't allow the mask to fit properly. Now, at this point, what do you think is most important? The thickness or the filtration layers of the mask or how well it forms a seal around your face? The answer is that the quality of the seal around your nose and the mouth 
is much more important than the thickness or the filtration levels offered by the mask. In fact, healthcare workers get tested for face fitting masks. That is all doctors and nurses are tested with masks to see if it actually forms a good seal on their face. One kind of an N95 mask might fit well for you and another kind might fit well for me. So they test it before giving it to workers. They do this in all hospitals in the West, but in India, unfortunately, the hospital administrators don't care for the workers much. We have to buy our own masks and putting in our own money to work in their hospitals. So it's not a nice thing to do. But for you in an airplane who is not seeing severely ill patients who are coughing around, any N95 mask would be good. Just make sure you shave your beard. If you have a beard and you wear N95 mask, the N95 mask would be like wearing a N60 mask. Now, another question, which do you think is more important? You wearing a mask or everyone else around you wearing masks? The answer would be that people around you wearing a mask would be more helpful for you because most masks are designed in such a way to prevent you from spreading the virus to others if you have it. But of course, we are smart and we'd already be wearing a N95 mask because we want the best amount of protection possible. And also because we want people around us to also be safe. All airlines have made masks compulsory, so everyone will be wearing a mask in the flight. But if there's a Karen of either gender sitting near you and not wearing a mask, ask them gently to wear a mask. If they refuse, speak to the flight attender to look into the matter. You have all the rights to ask for this. Our enemy in an airplane cabin is stale air. Stale air lets the virus linger all around you. So here's what you should do. Open up the overhead air vents. Like we discussed, the air it is blowing is 50% fresh air and 50% filtered air, so you know it is quite safe and clean. So what this air current does is that it pushes the air around you down so that if there are any viruses lingering around you, it will push it down and away from your face. If it's a long flight, then you don't have any option you'll have to eat the meals on board. But if it's a short flight and you can get through the flight without being like super hungry, try to skip the meal. First to eat, you'll have to take off your mask and food will be served at the same time for everyone. So everyone will take off their mask at the same time. As you can see, this is not like a really good place to be stuck in. If there are viruses floating around, they can, you know, settle down on your food and then you eat it and your hands might be dirty and the trays are almost always dirty. If you have to eat, uh, wipe the tray with wet wipes. I don't know if tray is the right terminology to use here. What I mean by that is that platform kind of a thing that comes off the back of the seat in an aircraft. So wipe this with wet wipes and then sanitize your hands. The flight attendants will provide both on request. Don't drink alcohol or soft drinks or a lot of coffee before getting on a plane. Drinking these will make you take more pee breaks and going to the toilet is not really a good idea in an airplane because the air won't be recirculated well in a toilet. Go to the toilet in an airplane only if it's absolutely necessary and do not take off your mask. Just because there's no one around you doesn't mean it's safe. Someone would have been there and probably they would have taken off their mask right before you went in, so you don't want to be exposed to that. And this goes well for toilets in the airport as well. Just any public toilet, really. So like we said, airports are a slightly riskier place than airplane cabins. So arrive right on time, not too early, not too late. Otherwise, you'll miss your flight. Skip that credit card sponsored free access to lounge and lunch. Keep your mask on at all times, use sanitizers, and like I mentioned before, skip coffee and alcohol and soft drinks in the airport. Now, other points you need to keep in mind are to not use those hot air blowing hand dryers that you see in all public toilets. These won't be maintained well and they contain a ton of germs. Imagine washing your hands and then getting germs on it. Either use paper towels or go for the more environment friendly alternative, bring your own cloth handkerchiefs. And always close the lid of any public toilet before you flush it. This prevents aerosolization of germs that are present in the toilet bowl. Not just during this time, but anytime you go to a public toilet, 
follow this. This not only keeps you safe, it'll keep the person who is using the toilet next after you safe. If you have the option of driving a car, that would be the safest option if the people traveling around you are people who live with you, like your family or your roommates. Even though it's a safe way to travel, driving might not be practical if you're covering long distances, especially like international travel. So like I explained, taking a flight might be the safest option of travel right now. I mean, not just right now, even otherwise, statistically, flying is the safest mode of transportation. Yes, it's uh, safer than walking actually. But non-air conditioned buses and trains might also be safe depending on how crowded they are. But from what we've been seeing for the past couple of months, I think we can skip this. So to summarize the entire video, first, the air in the cabin is probably safe, so you don't need to worry much about it. Point number two, wear N95 masks at all times. Don't take it off even in the toilet. Point number three, ensure that the person sitting next to you is wearing a mask. Point number four, open up those overhead air vents. Point number five, try avoiding eating in the cabin as much as possible. Point number six, hydrate well, but not too well. Point number seven, spend as little time as possible in the airport. And point eight is other miscellaneous things like general things to do, don't use toilet unless necessary, things like that. So those were the points. I hope these help you have an amazing and safe year. If you like this video, make sure you give it a huge thumbs up. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments. And if you want to watch more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you get a notification on your phone or on your laptop or however you watch these videos when I upload a new video. That being said, I wish you great health in 2021 and I'll see you in the next video.